say if you have uh, 80 uh, fasting, uh, you're in good shape. So you, you, are, you are But okay. now, you, you don't have no. spikes if you ha have 80? No. You can have 50 and have spikes. What is a spike? You eat your meal and your blood sugar goes up. Yeah. But if, you are if you're 50, if you're 60 or 70 fasting, you can still spike the 140. So the spike, spiking is a problem? It's independent of your fasting blood sugar. Hmm. That is a new breakthrough. And I'll be sharing some of that on Monday night. Yeah. Monday night. Yeah. Wait, you were next. Go ahead. Uh, did you see it work for cataracts? And if it does, maybe it's better to take it with the eye drops and all um, I, I'm not sure that it works with cataracts. It's a slightly different mechanism. The, the retinopathy, which is what the vision loss is, is not the same as cataracts. So when I'm talking about the 85% of the people with diabetes have retinopathy, which can make you go blind. That was what I was actually referring to, not exactly cataracts. So I can't answer the question, is what, I, what I'm saying. Remember, right, you mentioned also uh, carosin, uh, the uh, conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A, vitamin A? No. No? No. Did you, uh, uh, do you know about the, the stickers with the carosin, that uh, there is something like this? A sticker that you put in your body? I don't know. I don't know. Carosin, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of it. I'm not saying it, you know. It's a new thing in the U.S. Uh, yeah, well, a patch. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Remember, I'm looking for a vegan source, and the only vegan source we have is here that we have. I doubt whether those patches are vegan source. Why is that important? Obviously, I've made a, a particular effort to show how people can be completely safe and being vegan, right? I mean, that's what, so I'm obviously going to explore all the vegan sources. So I can't tell you whether that's a meat source, but most likely it's meat, yeah. Anything more about carnosine? It's really a major player. And, and it's something that people don't really talk about. Everybody is deficient. As I mentioned, from age 10 to 70, there's a 63% drop in your carnosine production and, and your carnosine levels. Brain, heart, muscle are your main areas. And obviously, it affects functioning in all those areas. I mentioned again about uh, mitochondria. It helps mitigate, uh, protect against mitochondrial degeneration. And one of the principles that we're going to go into when we talk about iodine is that mitochondria are key for energy production. One of the causes of cancer is mitochondria degeneration. In the average cancer cell, you have two to three hundred mitochondria. In the average healthy cell, you have three to 5,000 mitochondria. So mitochondria give energy to the cell. That energy of the cell has its ability to keep a, a normal function going for the cell. So we've got to see how important that is. So carnosine indirectly has an anti-cancer effect. It is not a cancer remedy. It has an indirect effect. Okay? Yeah. And is an average age that you suggest to start taking it? Yeah. Maybe 10 years old, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's when it starts, right? From 10 to 70. Uh, but, I, you know, again, I think in your 20s, it's reasonable to start taking that preventatively. Yes. Ate raw food for almost two years and then came to me and said, Listen, I feel I need a break and started eating meat. Would that be that could be a sign that he just needs carnosine? Not really. Okay. Because you're not getting sufficient carnosine unless you're eating three steaks a day. 
and that's give you 750 milligrams. So if he's not eating three steaks a day, which I don't think he is, he's not getting sufficient currency. No, no, that's not what I meant. I said if he, he ate raw food for two years... I, I know what you're saying, and I'm saying no. Okay. Yeah. Mostly what's probably is he's not getting enough protein, and he needs to increase the protein in his thing. And, you know, he's trying hard to please you. I think that's an important thing, and... But he may be really a little low in protein. Remember, 75, I'm going to say 60 to 75 percent of, of, of people generally need a higher protein content of their diet. That's, that's really important. As I mentioned yesterday, the genetic findings from Stanford is saying 75 percent of people need higher protein content. So we, and you don't hear me recommend, low protein, low fat, high complex carbohydrate that's not a, a particularly healthy diet except for maybe 25% of the population. So he, he's probably not that and he needs, you know, he's in that 75%.